Hi there, I'm John Glynn. Uh, what I've got here is a camera. I'm just going to uh, go through this is my camera here that I'm using. Um, I'm just going to go through some basic options in this one, or basic issues in fact in this one. And I'm just going to look at the ISO. The ISO in a camera, which is very small in this one, let's just put it down the bottom here, ISO uh, is on 100. And if I press the um, I'll go into the menu actually, quick menu, and I've got the ISO coming up at the top here, which I can move through, and I'll show you how that works. Oh, it didn't on that occasion because I was in the wrong option. And I can go up and down the ISO, so the auto ISO 100, 200, 400, it usually doubles. You can actually see in some cameras you might even be able to break it into fractions of an ISO, which is very much a digital medium, and you can see it goes to a very, very high numbers indeed. Now, why do we have an ISO, and when does it work? When would we actually, when would we actually use the ISO as an option? What's it actually doing? Well, the ISO. Uh, enables us to take pictures under low lighting conditions okay so without adding flash and still enabling us to hand hold the camera so we don't get any camera shake um, so effectively we're pretending to the camera there's more light than there really is that's the kind of thing that you're thinking about um, the ISO will work on um, program mode aperture value mode shutter priority mode and manual mode. In a um, Canon, shutter priority mode will be TV mode, okay, time value. Um, but otherwise it, it will be shutter, I think, in all other camera systems. And that's when you'll find that the ISO becomes enabled for you to choose in auto mode and, and also intelligent auto, if that's what you've got on your camera, you will find that it will be um, it will be decided for you, and you'll have no control over it. Okay, we like to take control of the ISO because there are drawbacks of changing the ISO, and in particular, if we go up to bigger and bigger numbers, I'll explain that now. Okay, so we have the ISO. As I up the ISO, just let's see whether I'm going the right way. Um, you'll find other numbers at the bottom of my page will let the screen change and you'll see that in this case the shutter speed is or the ISO is going up and numbers down here are changing I'll go back down I'm doing this backwards and the lower the ISO the longer the exposure time. If it goes into auto ISO, the ISO will be decided by the camera. I've also got intelligent ISO and then I can choose 100, 200, 400 and you can see the shutter speed is getting faster and faster. If there isn't enough light uh, it, it usually warns me which is basically that I'll end up, um, if there isn't enough light, I will end up with everything down here changing colour. In my case it goes red. In other cameras it will flash on and off to warn you that there's a problem with the light or light levels in your camera. Okay, So if it can take a picture then it remains white or steady. Okay, If it can't take a picture then it will warn you in some shape or form and tell you that it's getting too too dark. It might also tell you there's too much light as well, actually, as a warning. There usually is a warning of some kind. Um, and if I can get it to do that with mine, I'll try and force it so you can see the impact. Let's just see whether I can... Let's just go to a lower ISO, because that ISO is very, very high. And if I go to a lower ISO, 
and then put it into the room. Ah, there we are. If I go to a lower ISO and point it into the room, you can see that it's telling me it's probably going to be too dark, and it's not only gone red, it's also flashing to warn me that everything is going to go to, it's going to be a very dark picture, or it might well be a dark picture. It doesn't mean it definitely will be, but as you can see in this particular case, it is, because there's nothing there. So if I want to take pictures in this room, I'm having to think, right, how do I add more light? And one of the easiest ways is by upping the ISO. So let's go back. <laughs> let's just set it up correctly so that I'm in the right position. OK, here we are. So I can up the ISO. What I did then was go to a low ISO, a low ISO being 100. And now I will go up to a bigger ISO number and try and take the same photograph. And now you can see that my shutter and aperture are no longer flashing red. When I take a picture now and play back, there's a picture. And that was the previous picture. So I now have a picture, maybe a bit overexposed, but I've got a picture as opposed to no picture at all. OK, so by, by changing the... ISO, I enable myself to tell the camera I've got enough light to take a photograph or effectively pretend to the camera that I have enough light to take a picture. So the ISO, here we are, enables me to, over, to force the camera to see more light. And you can see actually, even within my camera itself, that there is a slight change in brightness levels as I go through them. Um, there are drawbacks. We, the thing with the ISO um, is we really want it as low as we possibly can for any given lighting condition. So when we're outdoors, we would normally have it at a low ISO, something like 100 or 200 ISO. That's when your cameras are optimised. That's their optimist, the, the best quality picture you'll get will be when you have it on 100 or 200 ISO. Um, your cameras are optimised for that kind of, of ISO number range, if you like. As you up the ISOs, we have problems. and big problem is a thing we call noise. Basically we get electrical interference. What's happening when we change the ISO in a modern digital camera is we're changing the electrical current. It's a bit like um, if you've maybe in school, if you did physics at school, you would have a row of lights coming on a board and by adding a resistor you change how powerful those lights are, how many lights come on and it might be that if you up the number of lights in a row that you have lit, they won't be as powerful as just having one light lit. So as we change the electrical current coming through a digital camera with the ISO resistance, although we can see more, as you can see more lights coming on on electrical circuit, you actually lose power. And because you lose power, you introduce other issues into your photograph. And this is what we call noise. We get electrical interference coming in. It's not a clean, clear signal. We get a, a signal which um, is mucky, dirty, and, and rather messy. So I've taken a picture earlier to show you noise um, because it's very difficult to describe otherwise. And it, it, it was just a picture of the room and I'll see if I can get to say what ISO it was. It was taken at 12,800 ISO. So it's quite a high ISO. And when you look at the, the picture on the back of the camera, it may look OK because you think, oh, that's all right. Um, I can see everything quite clearly. However, if I had to zoom in on the picture, we would start to actually notice the noise. So then I zoom in a bit. 
and as we zoom in we can notice that nothing is particularly sharp. Look at the, the actual radiator, it's all fairly mottled and there are colours appearing in the picture. It's a white radiator but I can see other colours appearing in the picture as well which are purples and yellows and the wall behind which is a um, just a magnolia actually, just plain magnolia also has other colours appearing in the picture purples and yellows, greenish hues, various odd colours and um, and to try and hide that kind of look you can see that the picture is quite soft and it looks a little bit out of focus. Okay, It almost looks like a, a watercolour painting. Now sometimes that can look quite attractive um, and a lot of people use them for things like landscape photography but for people pictures, if you're photographing somebody at a wedding, um, they probably wouldn't appreciate looking like some kind of reptile. Okay, So you need to be very wary of upping the ISO to the very, very high numbers. The best thing to do is, as I've done just now, is take a picture inside your house um, of something fairly plain, neutral colours, and just blow up an area and just see how mottled it is. Um, if if you like the effect, then great. If you find that it's really mottled and you think, no, you can't use it, then you know you wouldn't use it at that particular ISO number. In this case, 12,800 for this particular camera would be pushing it a bit. Um, why do manufacturers have such big numbers? Well, it's a computer. They can quite easily go as high as you wish. You can take a picture and under certain circumstances, uh, for insurance purposes or whatever like that, you might need to take these sort of pictures. But for general everyday use, um, you would always try to go to a lower ISO. So the lower the ISO, the cleaner, the sharper the picture will look uh, and the nicer the picture will be. The sh and therefore camera manufacturers design their, uh, the, the sensor in here, what we would call in the old days film, for around about 100 to 200 ISO, which is where you'll get your cleanest looking images, your sharpest looking images, okay? And instead of having this kind of uh, mottled, mottled effect. So when I'm setting up my pictures, um, we would go to the ISO option. Uh, it might have a button on the back that says ISO. If you don't have a button on the back that says ISO, it might be within the menu setting or within the function button setting, which you may find here, or you may have a quick menu. And the quick menu would also open up the ISO options in a Nikon at the under, the under the letter I, and you can then again go through the different ISOs, and you would go down to an ISO which enables you to work without getting too much noise. Okay. And in my case, I try and work around the region of 100 to 200 ISO with most of my pictures. The reason we would have to up the ISO would be if we're doing indoor photography without flash. So if we went into a museum, art gallery, at somebody's wedding, maybe in a church, where you can't use flash because it would either ruin the atmosphere or your, it's, it would ruin the artefact, like in an art gallery, taking pictures of paintings are not going to be very keen for people to use flash because the flash would uh, undermine the quality of the paintwork eventually and the colour. So um, what they would do is you turn off the flash and you'd up the ISO and you might be working at an ISO of about 800 or 1600 ISO and most cameras would probably be fine at that sort of ISO number. The lower the better though. Okay. So basically it's just changing the electrical current to enable us, or enable the camera, to effectively see more light than, than there is really available. Um, but it enables you to take a picture without camera shake, so you can get a quicker and quicker shutter speed um, with, with the light that's available to you. So that's the purpose of the ISO. 
but do be aware that as you up the ISO you will introduce artifacts or noise uh, and we would like to keep that as low as possible. Okay, so hopefully that will help explain a little bit about the ISO and why we would use it. Okay, thank you for watching.